going on YouTube fam? Mikey here, shooting another high adventure video. Guys, today, the deal is we're going to try to start a crawdad feeding frenzy. The way we're gonna do that is I'm going to try to spear a big carp. Not one of those little suckers, those little yellow belly suckers. I'm talking a big brown carp. There are a few of them in the river. I know a couple of spots to look for them. We're gonna try to spear one of those big boys, fillet him up, stake him to the bottom of the river, and then get those crawdads to come out, start eating them. And of course, we'll round out the video with a little catch and cook at the end. Let's get started. Alright, time to dive in. I have my spear tip ground town to a nice lethal point because these carp can sometimes be difficult to spear, especially these big ones that we're going after. I am using a Mako Hawaiian pole spear. Love this type of spear. And this is literally not much underwater footage because you can see them hanging out right there. Bam! This is, I'm, I'm like in the water for two minutes maybe at the most. Get a nice headshot. Water's pretty murky because it's morning time, but I kind of use that to my advantage because these carp are pretty smart. They hang around in that those wood pilings, so they're kind of difficult to get to. Uh, as you can see, like I said before, headshot. That carp would normally be fighting quite a bit, um, but he is not. He's dead. Nice shot there. Love that. That's the way you want to hunt for him. And um, But like I said, I got out in the morning and used kind of that murkiness to my advantage. He didn't really see me sneaking up on him. Uh, look at the scales on the side of this fish too and that's what's difficult to penetrate because they do have almost like an armor on them so i was actually able to bypass those scales get it right in the top of the head great shot right there so this guy actually was well, i thought he'd be around about 10 12 pounds right at like a little over 17 maybe say 17 pounds that's the perfect size that's exactly what we're looking for uh to get this this basically crawdad buffet going and so what i'm doing now is i'm just kind of filleting the carp open so i can lay it out so there's so the crawdads have a lot of area to consume this carp now this carp reeked while i was doing this i don't know how some people eat these things because it smelled terrible but uh, maybe i'll have to do a carp catch and cook one day and just give it a try so anywho now as you can see i've got them out on the bottom and what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start putting some stakes through them into that sandy area got them out kind of in a nice open spot and let that stinky fish do the rest of the work um and draw those crawdads outs out of all, all that wood because i know they're in all that timber and stuff it's just i can't it's very difficult to just try to go down and catch them that way and there you go you can see i mean that fish has been on the bottom for maybe a minute minute and a half they're starting to make their way out. And this is maybe like three or four minutes into that fish being on the bottom. I literally just set the GoPro down there. And you can see, I already got one making his way to the bait. Doesn't take long at all. There you go. Now I've got about half a dozen hanging around. Nice plump trout. There are definitely some nice trout down there. The reason, too, I stake it to the bottom is because... Uh, uh, so there's one of those sucker fish right there. That's what I normally go after. Pretty stupid, so they're pretty easy to spear, but I wanted something bigger. Um, there's our trout friend again. But the reason I stake it to the bottom is because I am in a little bit of current, and I don't want that carp to get taken away. There you can see, I've got a ton. I mean, there are probably about 15 crawdads or so hanging around there. More to come. And uh, that just makes pretty easy pickings. Uh, instead of hunting for them and flipping over rocks. So you can see them starting to make their way out of the wood. And they really like that, that piece of meat that I filleted out down there. I think it's a little easier to access. They're, they're hitting those scales on the upper part of the carp. And so it just, it just it makes it so easy to pick them up now. You can see them hanging out around the wood. And so I just go down with my bag and then just start picking them up like candy. It's, it's really kind of a fun way to do it. Plus, I enjoy spearing the carp. Always fun. It is legal to spear uh, trash fish in Idaho. It is not legal, though, to spear like uh, like that little guy right there. He's a white fish. That's called a white fish. They're really delicious, but super bony. Uh, so not a, not legal to spear game fish. So I'm setting up my cameras around here. Now, what you can see in the background is basically like a big pile of like leaves and sticks, silt, and some trash, unfortunately. So I set this right by that pile. And here in a minute, you're gonna be able to see, it looks like the pile starts to move because in fact, you can see it right now. The, the crawdads are starting to come out of that pile. I've moved the tr this uh, big sucker uh, over here uh, to this next to the pile because I know there have gotta be crawdads in there and here they come. You can see them in the background there, just starting to make their way out. They're kind of fighting with each other too. And by the end of this, I had probably like 
20, 25 crawdads all around this uh, this big piece of carp here. And you can see me in the back there. Now I'm just going along, picking them up. There's some big ones down here. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Pretty easy way to do it. So that was the strategy today on catching these crawdads. When the water's warmer, they're out on the bottom, kind of like candy, just hanging out. Uh, so it's really easy to catch them, and, and you don't have to flip over rocks or anything. But in this instance, just so much fun. I enjoy getting out, being able to spear something like a carp. Working a little smarter, not harder. Good times. Oh, guys, that was epic, super fun. Man, when I put that carp down there, I mean, I barely had it down there. And it was just like flies to honey, man. They just came out of nowhere. Made my job a lot easier catching these crawdads. Now, I have the cook stuff out, ready to rock and roll. Let's throw down a quick catch and cook crawdad boil. This video would not be complete without one. Let's get started. To start our boil, we're gonna bring some fresh water to a boil. Fill it up about that much is good. Now that we almost have our water to a boil, I'm going to add, no, this is not moonshine. This is Zatarain's Cajun seasoning in liquid form. It comes in either big pouches or liquid form like this. The reason I'm not doing a big pouch is because I'm not doing a big boil. I'm scaling back the boil, just doing a small boil for myself. We're gonna pour some of this in there. That is potent. Woo! Go oh, about yay much. You could just kind of eyeball it, however spicy you want it. Do not take a swig of this. I would highly recommend marking this jar because if someone thinks this is some good old apple pie or a little, take a little sip off of some, uh, some, some of the good stuff. Uh, they're gonna be in for a surprise. Now while we let that come to a boil, over here I have mixed up some potatoes, onions, and some Polish kibalsa that's also gonna go in with um, my crawdads to supplement uh, the crawdad meat because obviously the crawdad meat's not gonna be enough to fill me up. I'm also gonna throw these couple of lemon slices in here as well. And I'm also gonna add some garlic powder to that. Or you can use crushed garlic. I'm just gonna throw some garlic powder in there. Crushed garlic, though, would be a lot fresher. Um, but that's what we're gonna be adding today to our boil. Guys, I also have to give a big shout out to Chris in New York for sending me this knife. It is a, it's a Rapala, um, what is it? Rapala Finland Super Flex. This is fantastic, super sharp. Love that handle. He heard me mention in one of my bro Aces videos that I wanted one of these, so he was gracious enough to send one out to me. Chris, big shout out. Thank you so much. I love this. Mwah. I'm going to use this in all my videos. And check this out. It also comes in this like buckskin, um, what is this? Also Finland, um, uh, pouch, holster. It's got a little deal for the belt there, a little loop for the belt. And this whole package is just fantastic. It is exactly what I need as a catch and cook person. Look at that. There's the whole package right there. Again, Chris, thanks so much. Appreciate it. All right, my garlic powder is in there. I also threw in a little Old Bay seasoning just to add a little extra kick to it. Now, before we throw the crawdads in though, the first thing that goes in are our potatoes because those are gonna take the longest to cook and let those cook down for maybe about five or six minutes. Let those boil up. And, uh, and then we'll go ahead and add the crawdads, our onions, and our Polish kibbutz. All right, so our potatoes have been in there for about five minutes. Time to go ahead and throw some crawdads in. There we go. Also toss our onions in there. and our kibbutzah. This is one full pot, guys. But we'll manage. All right, check that out. Guys, that is pretty much the finished product right there. Just, oh, smells delicious. Just a medley of summertime goodness. Let's go ahead and pull it off the burner. But what we're gonna do too, I want a little dipping sauce with that, a little butter. So let's pull this off and set them off to the side right here. Let that cool. Now while our burner is still hot, we're gonna go ahead and put some butter on and melt that down. I'm also gonna be throwing a little Old Bay seasoning in there with the butter. Also add some garlic powder.
and a slice of lemon. All right, we'll turn the heat off. Stir that all around good. Let all those flavors mix together. And we'll go ahead and pull it off. So I've got my melted butter. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get all of this out of that sauce. Just ladle it out onto a plate. Last of the potatoes, perfect. Our feast is ready. We've got our melted butter sauce with a whole plate of goodness. Guys, I'm starving after, that was a hard day of work there. Spearing that carp, getting those crawdads, diving for them. I even did a little handline fishing for trout, but couldn't catch any. Let's go ahead and get eaten. That right there is called a plate of summer flavor. Got my butter close by as well. Now all I do is I just take each ingredient, dredge it around in my butter. Mm. Just eat it like that. Crack open a crustacean here. Look at that, nice big juicy piece of tail meat. Right into my butter sauce right here. Mm. That Zatarain seasoning is spicy, but with that butter, that butter really tones it down. So, you get a pretty good kick. That's why you wanna drain all that water out or ladle all of your ingredients out. Check it out. I have made an onion, potato, crawdad, sausage sandwich. Dredge it in the butter. Down the hatch. Mm. Tastes like summer. YouTube fam, thank you so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed the recipe. I will see you in the next one.